I have a fascinating Meet the NFU today, a fascinating owner and a fascinating boat. This is John Brennan. Hello, John. Hi, Nicky. You're very welcome indeed to County Kerry in Ireland. Thank you very much indeed. Nice to have you here. It's fantastic to be here. Yeah. And this is a fantastic machine. I've never yeah. seen anything quite like this before. What is it? This is a boat built for this part of the world, which is quite unusual because most boats are built for the Med, but they don't really take care of Northern Europe. So this boat is made in Antrim by a company called Red Bay. It's my fourth Red Bay. It's the second biggest they've ever made. It's 14.5 metres on paper, a little over 15 in reality. Um, and it's a, for, designed for myself and my wife to bring people out and entertain from the hotels that we own here in the southwest of Ireland and that's basically what it's all designed for. Fantastic, it looks amazing. Could we have a little look on board and have a look around? Absolutely, be thrilled. Awesome, okay. I'll follow. Oh, no, yeah. grand, grand. <laughs> I've been told off for saying awesome. You have to remember it's grand in Ireland. <laughs> wow. So it is a big chunk of boat and the one thing I notice is that it is kind of a rib. Yeah, this is foam filled, it's not air filled. Okay. So it's solid but it gives you the buoyancy out at sea. Right. And it is, it's built for the Atlantic, it's built for the west coast of Ireland where you have swells in Scotland and those waters um, and it is, it's extremely stable in, in weather. Red Bay have a fantastic reputation for building conventional ribs. In recent years they've gone bigger, the 1150 is the smaller model than this which I had for two years and then we traded and we got this uh, six weeks ago and we've 110 hours on it already. Wow. Uh, but it's built for going, this is a pure cruiser. It's extremely comfortable and it's just, it, it lacks some of the frills that you'd have on other princesses and um, sun seekers and fair lands, um, but it makes up for it in sea keeping ability and speed um, in where we live. And you have to have a boat for where you live. There's no point having a dream and weather not like this every day. Absolutely. Yeah. 100 yeah. percent cool so if we follow you around yeah. perhaps we can have a loop around the outside and then okay. head in so, so one of the things is we have a side entrance which is nice because a lot of boats only have um swim platform entrances yeah and um, so this is nice this is a removable step which helps to get you in and then we take that off when we go so So this is the forward deck here, all flat, we have a flush, um, what do you call those things? Hatch. Hatch, the deck hatch. Thing, exactly. <laughs> and there that goes down into the um, bow bedroom. And it's very slick, um, we have a recessed anchor here, um, which is operated from here. We have 100 meters of chain on it. Um, and it is, it's just built for water. It's very purposeful looking from yeah. here, for yeah. sure. It has commercial windscreen wipers, it has, um, a helicopter landing pad. <laughs> <in here. laughs> very, very timely. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. So you wouldn't drink. You only come up here when we're on anchor, and um, we have no business being up here when we're when we're at sea, really, at all. So the the side decks are quite wide for walking, but you have the handrail here on the inside, but you're not you're not protected on the outside, and so you just have to be careful of that. Yeah. But I guess that makes life easier when you're coming into dock or whatever. Yeah. You can hop straight off. You're not clambering over things, are no. you? And when, now that you say that, this is all here. Uh, okay. So when you're coming into dock, we, we just, I can move this boat on my own. Right. And, um, it's totally um, easy to operate on my own. So you have that area of your bow trust, you have all your controls for your depth and all of that. So it's very, very easy to um, maneuver. Fantastic. You don't, because it has the, the um, tubes, you don't necessarily have to put on the... Um, um, fenders before you dock but it does help of course yeah, yeah. of course and i see back here you fitted it with a marianne that's a very nice yes, accessory very good yeah with a very expensive accessory <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> quality though, quality right? yeah you get what you pay for don't you quality has no price yeah that's true enough so this is a um, fixed table here a fixed seating around on the outside and then we have a barbecue here yeah which is great, the grill. Looks like it's seen some use as well, Yeah, already. we use it all the time, uh -huh. we use it all the time. We don't have a generator. Right. And uh, we have um, 6,000 watts on an inverter down there, and that keeps us sufficient for around about 12 hours. Wow. So we can boil kettles, heat, use the grill, use the oven, use the hob, and we'll get about 12 hours use out before we need to go for power again. That's so brilliant. That's, that's as much as we need. I don't fancy generators and the noise they make when you're at anchor. Um, this is much more calmer and refined and sensible. Absolutely, absolutely. And at the back here, yeah. bathing platform? 
Yeah, it's a strong term now in Kerry. It means <laughs> Understood. So, yeah, we have a, a deck down here then. Yep. Um, and we have all our engine and all that here for ah, the tender that goes in this side. Brilliant. Then we have the fender. Fender hatches here, which are all full of fenders, spare fenders. But I like to keep the fenders in this here yep. for the simple reason: when I come in on my own, I can grab them and pop them out, and I don't have to be running down here. Because when we pull up the tender here and tie it in, this becomes slightly and difficult to get into. So uh, these are just spare ones. If we want to double fenders on each side, if we had people pulling alongside of that, we can use these. You have your shower here, then, and um, hot and cold. Your life raft underneath, and um, down there. Gotcha. And then on this side here, then we have a cleaning, and the same as this on the other side, just it's full of cleaning material. Right. And you have your uh, shore power there then. Brilliant. Yeah. Very well laid out. Yeah, it's practical, and that's the lovely thing about Red Bay. This isn't a production boat. This boat is built for me. Right. And they take you take your hull, and then you design everything else. This is hull two of the 1450, okay. and the man who bought hull one changed the interior somewhat. This old window pops up here, uh -huh. and just as a safety, then we have a little hook on it for over there. So this is our interior here because it's it's really designed for two of us, and then to bring people out for the day. So we want to sitting area as much as possible. On the hall one, for instance, they did away with the kitchen here and they put the kitchen along here and they've done away with this couch. But they got a massive big bedroom down in this area because he had, I think he's four children. And so he wanted more beds. We didn't need bedroom space because uh, we won't have people overnight very often. So this space down here now is a huge big, which we'll look at in a few minutes, but it's a huge big storeroom for anything that you possibly want. But it's funny because I watched a video of yours last night, would you believe? And um, we're showing a very, very fine boat, 120 foot boat, but the actual space to put something in the store was very limited. Yeah. Like there was a um, um, Leserat, which was full of um, electrical equipment, generator in it and a whole host of things. The actual space to bring in and put something in was very, very, like we have two bicycles down outside here. You could put anything you want down here. So it, it, we're lucky that we have all of that space available to us. But the layout suits us fine. We have our kitchen here, it has everything with a microwave oven, a hob, which is induction, which is fantastic, because we don't have induction at home, which you probably have it on the boat, we don't have it at home, um, which is really great. And then I love a double sink. Yep. Um, I've had boats before with single sinks, and I always find then you're left with a plate or something, and you're waiting to dry it, and you don't know where to put it, and it just take the second little half basin is, is, is a good um, addition to it. So then up here then we have our little sitting area as such. This table here then is uh, opens up, Drunquina, that's the name of the property here. And this was done by a local craftsman, um, Adrian, um, who did this for us. And he took the urban map of the area and put it on the uh, scandard and then cut it out. And this is where we are here. This is Drunquina. This right. is Kenmare. Yep. Then we're going to go out in a few minutes through these islands, down the bay here, um, Kilmacalogue here, all the way down to Derry Nan. People who know the area may know of those places and then you have Scarif and um, Two Headed Island and then out here to the uh, Skelligs, Skellig Michael, then you have Valencia Island over here and then on the south side we have the Bull Rock which is a favourite of ours, a magnificent um, location, the Bull Rock, then you have Dursey Island with the only cable car in Ireland crosses over to the mainland and then up here into Castletown Bear, the second biggest fishing port in Ireland, Bear Island and up into um, Glengariff. So this is the whole area. So for people like yourself who haven't been here before, it's nice to spend a few minutes here with them and tell them where they're going and it's just, it's interesting that they have it. I think that's a fantastic yeah. idea. I've not yeah. seen that done before and it is brilliant. It's, yeah. it's genius. Yeah, no, it's nice. And then when we're on our own, just then you just flick it over and then that's handy for when you're walking up and down. Yeah. But to be honest, we, we don't do a lot. There's headroom here is huge, so you're not going to get a handle on the roof. But we have a nice handle there that you're holding onto there with this, <laughs> and then you hit this there, and the handle there, it's fine. Yeah. We don't, if we're out on water, uh, we're sitting there, and that's we don't move around too much when we're out. Of course. We get there quick, is the thing. And so we have all the, um, like, all of this is designed in Red Bay um, for our specification. Right. So you can have whatever you want. It's a blank canvas. Yeah. This suits us. They have other ones then that have 12 seats for passenger boats. Um, hole number one has five seats. He's three children, I think, um, and himself and his wife. So there's five seats in there. So you can have whatever you want. They're extremely flexible. Um, and they're, it's our fourth, fourth one. So we know them inside out. Yeah. So that's where it all happens over there. Everything is right beside us in the right hand side. Um, it's all within arm's reach. We have remote controls for the screen, so we don't have to reach for them. Um, and basically on this boat, you point, you do your um, auto 
pile it and you go and you, all you do is you literally look for lo lobster pots apart from that you don't touch the wheel it is it's a cruiser and the last boat the 1150 version is a sports boat you want to turn it and it's it's a really driver's boat and this thing is a cruiser she just goes like that and is quite happy sitting at 3000 revs at 26 27 knots at burning 5.5 liters a mile and she'll go all day at that there's 2000 liters in it so about 360 um, mile range on it depending on weather and the rest of course so that's Gwen's domain in there okay she likes to know where she's going so she has her screen there. <laughs> she, she doesn't trust me no i understand so down here then we have all our um bedrooms okay um i'm going to go in there because it gets that's up at the bow of the front room wow that's a decent size i'm surprised actually yeah. and yeah. it's very nicely finished i love the headboard and things yeah. like that details like yeah. that and you can stand up straight yes even you yes <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, no. As I like to say, I'm six foot two and it's plenty of headroom. Yeah, no, it is, yeah, no, it's all right. I can fit well into it. Yeah. Such a problem. So we've drawer storage underneath, storage there beside you. Mm -hmm. And um, to be honest with you, like everyone talks about storage. If to me now, if you have two pairs of shorts and three pairs of t-shirts, we're happy out for a week. <laughs> You're done. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's fine. Fair so, enough. So that's that. Then, then you have them, what they put in on this one now, which was nice. Which and um, they put in recess lighting around the edge now. Uh, okay, yep. Which is nice. Then we've heard bedside reading lights and there's USB ports on them for charging phones. Yeah, and that. Nice which idea. Grand. Yeah, then, I like the light wood as well. That looks good. Yeah, no, we we lightened the wood down here. We did. Um, um, oh yes, I can see. Yeah, it's yeah. the darker oh, wood yeah. at the top. Yeah. yeah. And then we lightened it down to a, they had a lime joke down here. Brilliant. Which was really nice. And we'll two things that I wanted from the 1150 to this is I wanted proper commercial uh, mattresses, right? Um, which are proper uh, king size mattresses, and um, but it make all the difference because the last one we had we had a foam mattress and you couldn't sleep properly, and so we wanted proper king size mattresses, not ones that are heart shaped at the top. I wanted a proper square rectangle mattress, so we got two of those bedrooms in, and I wanted a stall shower as well. So ah. we go in there then and have a look at that. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so that's yeah, totally separate, and I think that's yeah. a really nice thing because um, you can keep everything dry then. Yeah, and we have hooks in there then for the jackets and um, that we can put in there when they get wet. But you don't get wet in this boat. Like if it's raining, you're not out. Yeah. So it's a different kind of it's 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 different from the last boat we had. But that's that's we're delighted with that because it just gives you comfort. And we did toy with putting in two bathrooms, and I looked at a review from a guy who had a. Um, a, a trawler yacht and the question was should they have two heads or one head and everyone would say no two heads two heads or one head one head you can't on a 50 foot boat you can't waste space with a second head and this guy rang in and he says listen he said i've cruised all my life he said i've been all over the world he said lived aboard for 20 years and he said his second head was only used once but when the once it was used he said we wanted it <laughs> i understand so what we did was we put in one and then yeah. we did a port of one down in in, in the lazarette down the back oh so right we, what we, so we have it if we need it but i didn't want to lose the floor space because it's a lot it's 52 feet in the boat but the second head is kind of big so yeah, yeah that's what we have yeah that makes sense in here then we have our locker space and all that for coats and whatever else or our own clothes really yeah it'll be hanging there and yeah. then this is really good compared to the 1150 this is all our electrics but this goes right up behind the helm so if you take out the toolboxes there you can stand in there and work head height and oh, all the wow. electrics behind the behind the um, steering that makes sense the console yeah it's very, yeah. It's very neat I have to say. yeah and you've got the distribution panel obviously up above as well but yeah all electrics are in this box here yeah but they're very accessible which is great yeah and then we have this down here so this is the second bedroom then um which has a, a couch oh, that's here a for, really good size yeah, yeah and then we have another king size mattress here um and uh this is a nice room this is a good room good head right on yeah then if we had someone and they had two kids or whatever the case would be that, that can be a bed there as well of course and then just more shelf space in there then yeah it's it's an ingenious design that's actually. a rib for you know yeah <laughs> the ultimate rib <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's just that the ribs make sense for here. You'll see now when we go out, they're just it's just solid in the water. Yeah. And, we'd be, and when you go looking for boats and you look at the boat, the suit where we live in the world, um, Botnia Targa is the other one that comes up and you assess and you've one or two of the Finnish boats that come up. 
but Red Bay, I would just find it hard to pass them. They, right. They've been extremely good to us over the years. Um, service is not a problem. Um, and they just build a good boat. And they, they, I, they've never said no. Like if we ask them for something, yeah, we can do that. So, That's the thing. And yeah. I think with the Botany of Tigers, they're a fabulous boat. Absolutely no question. Brilliant yes. sea boat. And they would do everything that you want. But what you couldn't do with that yes. is say, OK, here's a blank sheet of paper. That's and this is what I want. Yeah. You can't incre incre increase the fuel tanks. Yeah, and which I thought were small. And the other thing, which um, and I don't want, to, I think they're a smashing boat. And yeah. we, we were in Southampton a couple of years with Wessex, and they, we went on to the forty six. And Gwen, my wife, said, "Wow, yeah, um, it is a lovely it boat. It's a beautiful boat. Yeah, but the one thing that kills me." I love a proper mattress. Right. I love a mattress that you can buy. We buy a particular type of mattress, and it's just we sleep like we went. We were away for three days last week, and we slept. Uh, I think we slept ten hours a night. Uh, last night I was up sending emails at four o'clock in the morning. When I'm at home, I just can't sleep. I'm yeah. up at four o'clock in the morning working. Yeah. Uh, when you go in the boat, you just when the fresh air kills you. If you have a good bed, you're gone for the night. Yeah. It's worth it. Yeah. That's why I want to two proper king size mattresses. So yeah. there's all storage down here, big long drawers here, the normal that go in under the beds. Yeah. So that's basically it. Fantastic. I think the only area we haven't covered, in fact, is the engines. We should perhaps yeah. go and have a look at those if we may, and perhaps very, stick our nose in that lazarette as well. That would be very disappointing for you now, the engine room. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice thing here now just um we keep all our charts in here which is full size oh so brilliant all the full size charts in there yeah so you're not um folding them and putting them away enough yeah so down down in this area oh here, i've just noticed the wine cellar oh yeah the wine cellar <laughs> along the top it's, here it's a bit depleted at the minute now yeah. <laughs> you just had a couple of days away yeah <laughs> I had I had a, a step on the last boat, which you lifted, and Adrian, who built the table for us, and um, we designed a, a wine cellar in there, and it was gas. Everyone commented on. So when we got this, anyway, we did this here, and they put this in as a joke, uh, for me. But it's brilliant. Yeah. It just puts it away. It's, it's it is. It's a good idea. And it's all foam in there behind. It's all cut out so the bottles sit tight. Brilliant. Now, um, do you want me to go down first on this? Sure. Do you want to take camera in for you? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll come on down, it's okay. okay. So, this is basically just the storeroom. Wow, okay? it's huge. It's huge, a huge space now for anything that you want to put down into it, um, inflatable kayaks or anything. Yeah. But what they did on, and this is the flexibility of Red Bay, what they did on, on hull one, over your head, they took out the whole kitchen, so you have full standing room where you're sitting at the minute on hull one. Right. And they put a double bed here and a single bed over here because he wanted beds for the kids. Yeah. But you had full standing room right down to this wall here, which was a fantastic use of space. We didn't get as good a use of space up in this particular boat, but we didn't need it. We didn't want the third bedroom. Yes. But it's very handy for all of this stuff here. And there's our potty. Ah, uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Delighted to say, it's, 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 I often think the day we do need it, we won't know how to work it because it hasn't even been taken out of the box. It won't even matter. No. <laughs> so we put in a freezer down here, which is grand. We used that last week. Yep. Um, and then there's inspection holes here for the tanks. So we can get into the tanks there. We take them off and there's steel plates behind that to do tank inspections or if we've got dirty fuel or anything like that, we can get in to get at it. Okay, so the tanks are under these sides? There and here. Uh, okay. Here as well. Right, gotcha. We have 2,000 litres in total wow. of fuel. Um, I, I would love... The last boat had a range of 500 miles. This is 360, and I missed the 140. Really? Yeah. Okay. It just gives you that security. You can go that extra bit and never have to worry. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's the way it is. We couldn't fit in anymore. <laughs> with weight and that, it was a different issue. I think that's but, the thing, and a lot of people say, I, I get comments sometimes on the videos where people say, oh, well, I'd take out that crew cabin, and I'd put a big fuel tank in there. And yeah, I think, yeah, no, you wouldn't, because when no. you filled it, the boat wouldn't get on the plane. No, exactly, exactly. And that was the dilemma. And 360 is still decent enough. Yeah. Do you know, like, it'll, it'll get us to France if we want to go to France. So, but the dream on this boat is that we go next year through to um, over to Norway, and down to Gothenburg, through the Gotha Canal, which is really what I want to do, out into Sweden, down through Denmark, into um, Kiel, down through and into Amsterdam. That's wow. the plan for us now. That would be fantastic. Yeah. And you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to show you something else which is going to come into play next year, hopefully. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Up we well, go. We'll follow you. <laughs> Is Marianne pressing buttons again? I have told her. Eject. 
<laughs> now, okay. Okay. So now we're in the heart of it all. Uh, we have three engines, three Yanmar 370s, which are a fantastic engine, the same engine that's in the block that's in the Amazon Toyota Jeep. Um, superb engine. But they were in the old boat, never causes a minute's trouble. And we have three of them, um, and it's extremely fuel efficient. Funnily enough, everyone says, oh, it drinks fuel. It doesn't, because the engines aren't over revved, and it just cruises. Um, and the three engines is interesting, because the two engines they'd be closer together but with three engines the outside engines are that much further apart so actually when you're turning on the joystick it only operates the outside two engines the joystick but it'll turn on its own length of course you've yeah. got a lot more leverage with the outdrive exactly. being further exactly. apart exactly yeah. we have a bow thruster but i rarely use it yeah to be honest so with all of this space here plenty of room to put in a generator if one wanted storage box up here and um, the heating and um, hot water two deck chairs two bicycles fuel tanks here and um, three fuel tanks in it in total um, all fed from either side so we don't have three individual fillers we fill one and it balances them all out and it's interesting there's no sense to the way the tanks fill because when you're looking at the gauges uh, the right one or the left one one could go up first or the middle one could go up first but just i don't understand how it goes in but anyway, all, by the end <laughs> as long as you'll end up full you're good well i know i have to write the check at the end of it anyway so that's yeah. fine <laughs> they fill but it's uh no it's 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 fine but thankfully now we have uh, everything's very easy huge headroom over the engine it's very accessible for the mechanics and um, to get in and bash everything and it's very simple we just have our three um canisters back there three coolants down here and our three water filters here so everything is visible um, and it's easy just quick checks I dip the oil every now and again and that's it I, I believe it's what professionals call very get out of it get out of it it is yeah no it is yeah it's like it's 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 great to get in there and get out exhausts yeah and, and there will of course something some stage or someday is going to be found that we can't get at but um i really don't know what that would be because this all comes off which they can be craned out if oh that's be. interesting because people yeah. often ask that question what happens the hatches yeah, are no, big enough to get them out bolts over your head there now that's all bolted down um, so that's that's under the table upstairs that can all just lift up right um, and get out get, get them out yeah anyway. and we've also got some fairly serious fire extinguishing yeah, system going on here all there. yeah yeah all the regulations on it, I suppose. Uh -huh. I, I, I'm not technical now, I'm not into <laughs> I know, fair but, enough. But um, I know we have to check those things. Yeah. And that's about it. But I anyway, know it's fine. Yeah. I know it's good. So that's okay. more or less it. Yeah, brill. Yeah. Okay. If we could then maybe perhaps have a little sit down, it'd be great yeah. to chat about your boating history no and what you job. do with this one. Yeah. And then. Uh, you mentioned going boating. Yeah, we might take it for a spin to make sure that the engines turn. I understand. Yeah, you could never trust an Irishman unless we get you out and prove it. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Look at Marianne. She's literally tucked away in a corner with a good book. It's not a bad way of spending that a morning. <laughs> I like his style. So we've had a really good look around the boat and if you're really observant you might discover that we're in a completely different spot. We're now at anchor and, um, and we've had a great whiz out on the boat. That's going to be a separate video which is coming soon. But what I want to do now is have a chat with John about his boating history and what kind of boating he does and just what boating means to John Brennan, if I may. So if we could start at the beginning, how did you get into boating in the first place? <laughs> Very good story. My sister was in the middle of a separation and there was a boat in the mix and I got the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Your custody. And, and it was an Auckland uh, um, 17, uh, Auckland Dory 17 foot, and it has a 60 horsepower Johnston. And this was back in the early 80s. And 60 horsepower isn't what it is today back then. And reliability wasn't what it is today in outboards. And it was a nightmare of a boat. But that's where I started. Good boat, they say unsinkable, very good cathedral hull on it and uh, really nice and we started on Loch Gill and Sligo and then we moved to Kerry and to Kenmare and then you, you live in here you have to have a boat and then I wasn't into ribs knew nothing about ribs at all and some of the local guys had ribs and I was out on one one day and I thought mm, that's kind of nice so I got myself a, a Navon 7.5 
uh, which wasn't made by Avon. It was a funny boat. Now it was neither one thing nor another, and there was a one seventy five Mercury on it, which drank fuel. There was a total imbalance between the two boats. They weren't well matched. Drank fuel and didn't go any speed. But anyway, we had that for two or three years, and then we bought a, a Aquador twenty six. Mm -hmm. which is a Finnish boat, but actually they had a manufacturing plant in Cork, which was interesting. So I bought that nice boat, um, proper V-berth up the front and another double underneath the mid cabin, underneath the, the, the middle of the boat. Um, and it was grand, it was lovely, but the engine wasn't reliable on it. I'd never had any luck with the engine. It was just one of those things, a Monday morning engine, as I called it. And then we sold that and then we bought a Red Bay 7.4, new with a 300 horsepower Suzuki on it which was a smashing boat a really good strong solid hull my first introduction to Red Bay and then we kept that and then we sold that and we went fairly up the steps fairly quick and we bought a Red Bay 1150 which was a smaller version of the boat we're on today and um, very fine boat really loved it sports cruiser really good uh, economy really good range 500 mile range in the tank and it was excellent but it was a fast boat and it was a sports cruiser you had to drive it yeah. and it had a very deep V hull unlike this boat here which is now more sprayed but anyway um, had that and then I thought we need something slower because I'm not into speed I don't particularly like speed on a boat I think if there's a cruising speed can handle the water fine but whether it's 18 knots or 26 knots doesn't really bother me so I thought we needed something slower and I always like slow boats trawler style yachts so I had a, a chance of buying a vault, vault Dutch boat steel um, bilge keel um, bilge keel boat um, which was a really nice boat center cockpit and um, wheelhouse in the middle and then bedroom on a dining room down below up front and a dining room or a bedroom down below at the at the aft and that was lovely but it only did six knots and it was my first introduction to really slow boating and it's nice to be able to go slow on a fast boat yeah but to be able to go fast on a slow boat is no great crack because you can't do anything more right so you can only go slower so um i got sick of that fairly fast and then it was a lovely boat there were lovely bernie's teeth and it was 40 years old it was a really good boat it had twin 145 volvos which were um nothing electronic in them whatsoever but just dead solid engines really good solid engines and it was keel cool so there was no salt water there was no corrosion in it or anything of that nature it was really well kept and um, but then it sold, sold it to a local lad in Drumquina. he's done it up and he's bringing it up to shannon which would be fabulous perfect boat for the shannon and then the 1150 was great but i really wanted to have a um, very posh this is now I wanted to have a proper mattress because if you get a good night's sleep that's half the battle and I wanted to have a stand up shower so then we went back to Red Bay and actually the day I went to Red Bay the guy who bought hold number one of the 1150 was actually there and we both had similar first world problems and we designed this and we talked to Tom and to Gary um, up there and they between us all we put together this boat here um, and we designed it and uh, here we are today Wow, so you've got quite a bit of input into the actual configuration of this yeah, one. Yeah, every inch of this now we would have designed the copper, the handles, the, the, the kitchen, the layout, the bookshelves, the very important wine rack, <laughs> um, the seating, all of that would be us. Yeah, yeah, no, we designed all that, the colours and the whole thing. Yeah, that's part of the fun. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, fantastic. No, that's, but it's great, it's a great company that allows you to do that. Um, because this is not a, a production boat. This is a bespoke boat coming off a production hull and the rest is to your own design. Right, now that so, makes sense. Yeah, it's it's not many do that anymore now. Um, and even some of the bigger manufacturers who allowed that flexibility in the past are tending to go towards more production, streamlined, take it or leave it style boats. Yeah. Um, but we're lucky to have this now. Yeah, that's brilliant. And what's what is a boating day for you typically, or, or a boating period? Yeah. If you head out on the boat, what what do you do with it? And um, for us now, um, you see, the difficulty for me is that we're in the hotel business. So when the weather's good and when boating weather is good, we're busy. Right. So it's not really a very good pastime for me. And um, but it's lovely because you used a, um, a word earlier on, which is correct, which is escapism, mm -hmm. um, and that's what boating is, and just gives you the freedom to get out the fresh air, to get away from it all, and just leave everything behind, whether that's for one hour or for three days. Um, the hour is as good as the three days very often and we escaped today for five or six hours and it's like a week away it's just bliss um, and we're lucky in the where we live that we have access to the water and we're very lucky that the water is is very inviting and the, the countryside around us is very very uh, scenic so bringing people out like yourselves who've never been here before it's always a joy because they see things we don't even see anymore and um, because we take it for granted because we see it every day 
but to be able to go out to places like the Skelligs or the Bull, um, if you just turn the camera now in two seconds, you're going to see a boat coming in from the Bull Rock or from the Skelligs. Ah, um, yeah. yeah. Which is another good Irish boat. So that's see, um, that little fella over there. Yeah. That's Sea Haven Marine. Uh -huh. um, Safe Haven Marine. You know they make the nice Thunder Child too. Yes. That's, coming, I... that's from the same house that that came from. That's good sea boat. Ah, okay. Um, they bring in uh, people out to the rock. So for us to be able to do that and go out there, that's the joy for us. Yeah, absolutely. And what's the furthest you've been on a boat? And um, we've been all around Scotland, three or four times. We've gone to Scotland. I went to Scotland on the 7.4 myself and my son, and um, we took off and went all the way to. A sky on that up to Fort William and then last year I took the 1150 on my own and um, and we went around from here to Holt and then from Holt to Bangor and then Bangor up the next day and um, and toured all of Scotland on my own on the 1150 which is fantastic and then in July this year which is only a month ago six weeks ago we took the boat straight from Red Bay um, and went across for 10 days and my wife and myself and uh, we toured all of Scotland went up as far as Malloc out as far as Barra um, and up to Fort William as well so we've travelled a bit now we've done 104 hours in it in six weeks wow so um, the goal is to get to Sweden that's what I want to do next year that was my next question actually yeah. what, what is the big dream with this are there any big trips planned um, Norway um, west coast of Norway down around the heel into Gothenburg, through the Gotha Canal, out into Sweden, down through um, the uh, Swedish islands, into Denmark, down to Kiel, and back into Amsterdam. That's one. And the second one is lo I'd love to cruise northern Spain. Right. And that's why uh, this boat um, will, is perfect for both trips because the third engine is going to be very interesting going through the canals ah, uh, because you only run the middle engine when you're going through the canals. Yep. And we have, ran, we have done a few trips on this where we've only ran the outside engines and lifted the middle engine. Um, and it's 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 interesting to look at the economy of it all because actually the best economy is running all three. Oh, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's the best um, from speed and from a, a litre per mile point of view, running all three. And we met boaters in Scotland with various different boats of 60 foot, 55 foot range, and they were all using probably twice the fuel per mile as this boat does. Um, and we would could have been doing four times the speed. Right. So uh, I'm not into speed, but it's nice to get there because we have a lovely deck. You can kick off the shoes and relax out there. Um, and then you have a whole other day's experience apart from just sailing to get from A to B. So it, it's, it's very versatile. I'm very happy. I, I often smile and when I look at your videos and that because no one ever says they have a bad boat. Okay? <laughs> it's true. Everyone has the best boat and everything is great. But I think this ticks a lot of boxes. It's not a med boat. It's not from south of Bilbao. Okay, it's northern Spain up. Um, and actually, when you look at boats in, in that category, um, there are very few boats that have the thickness of the hull, have the sea ability of this boat, the reliability of the engines, and um, that whole package coming together with the deck um, and the seaworthiness of it is quite hard to find. So we're very happy, but every boater is very happy with the current boat, I think. Of course, yeah, yeah absolutely. And that leads me on to another question because if obviously you've only just bought this boat yes. so it's probably not a good question to ask at the minute but if if you wanted to replace it or indeed what would your dream boat be absolutely in, you know all the time in the world and all the money in the world what yeah. would you be on um the time is the most important comment um, in that sentence and if you had all the time in the world and you were going for a long distance or long period cruising um, North Haven have a new, a new 625 coming out in the make at the moment which looks a really nice boat and that is it you're restricted to eight knots yeah. which is a different kettle of fish than this and sometimes when we pull this back to six seven eight knots and we're just cruising along it's lovely having the insurance policy of knowing you can oomph if you want to go yes and so it's a balance between that but it's very hard to find that boat and but i do have a very very soft spot for north north haven and what they have done um, don't give me sails, don't give me ropes, I have no interest. <laughs> if I want to go over there, I want to go over there. I don't need to go over there to get over there. I don't get that concept at all. Um, but I would stick with a North Haven if I had all the time in the world. Right. Um, and that's the difference between the two because you probably wouldn't go the distance every day um, because you don't have the speed. So you'd potter, which is fine. But um, from an engineering, from a quality, seeability, um, you're, you're restricting yourselves in my mind once you go outside of this boat to something in the eight to ten knot range and my time doesn't allow me to do that at the minute yeah i totally get that and i think 
the thing with it is with speed it's not necessarily about going faster but it's about your range within a pocket of time so if you've got five hours to go boating then suddenly getting a boat that'll cruise at 25 knots instead of five knots you have more than quadrupled your yeah. your range within that time yeah. and, and, the, and the places that you can go and the other thing, if we were in Kinsale and we left Kinsale and the water and the, and, the, and the day sea state was right, we'd be in the Scilly Isles in six hours. Wow. Like that brings you not only to a whole different country and a whole different experience in a very short time. So you might have a boat that will only do 10 knots, but it might take you 30 hours to get there. Yeah. So it's, it's a very different, you don't have to plan an overnight if you're on this and we can get there and have a fantastic um, um, time in the Scilly Isles or wherever that would be. And, the greatest difficulty with boating, and I think everyone has this, is there's no problem going. It's getting back. <laughs> That's it's true. Yeah. That's a very good yeah. point. I've not looked at it that way. And this boat, unless it's horrendous, you're coming home. Yeah. You might be doing 16 knots and said it's 26, so be it, but you're going to get there. Where a lot of boats, you wouldn't have that um, ability to do that. Yeah. So listen, as in everything in life, it's a trade. You know, we don't have a flybridge and um, we don't have all the gizmos that other boats have. We don't want them. We could have had them on this if we wanted them. Um, but I like to keep it plain and, and, and as, as, as clean as possible with as least problems that are on the horizon um, and eliminate as many problems as we can before they ever start. So actually, technically, this boat isn't very complicated at all. We don't have air conditioning. We don't have generators. We don't have gyros. We don't have fin stabilizers. We have none of those things. Um, but we do have what we need um, and what we need has worked very well. Um, and we it has well six weeks so it's early days but I have total faith in Red Bay and um, there's not many manufacturers uh, finish a boat today and let you out to go to Scotland in the tomorrow and not have to worry about you yeah um, and that's what that's what they're like and uh, this is our fourth we had a 1050 as well actually I forgot about that um, a cabin which we have back at the um, Drunkwina and um, but that is a different style of boat totally than this but it is um, um, I couldn't fault them yeah no, that's fair enough and i think if you find a manufacturer that really that you gel with and that works for you and works with you then that's a hard thing to yeah. give up isn't it i think when we bought the 1150 we might have had 30 emails of different types of specification changes and things like this i'd say we had no more than five on this boat right yeah because gary knew what we wanted he knew what we liked and we had the spec done properly before we go it's like building a house like if you do a spec for a builder and you say to him right i want three double sockets in every room and he prices for that, and then all of a sudden you realise, oh, well, we need six, but well, that's an extra. Yeah. You can't blame the builder if the price goes up. Yeah. Okay, it was your fault from day one. Whereas the spec on this from day one was very clean, um, and it was exactly what we wanted. And they threw in a couple of things. We have recessed lighting here, which we didn't have in the spec, and they do little things like that just to kind of say thanks, I suppose. And it's it's a nice gesture on their behalf, but they've. I haven't come across anyone who's had a bad experience with them. No, no yeah. that's fair enough. And they, they tend to keep people in the family, which I think I think um, Princess and a, a few of the best manufacturers in the world have a loyal following. Um, but for a rib manufacturer, um, the development of Red Bay and the innovation of them to be able to go from a 6.1 metre rib or a 5.5, I think they built day one, um, to produce this in probably 20 years, it's an indication of what they want to look after their customers. Like when Andrew and myself went into the room and talked to them when we were going from the 1150 to the 1450 and they had only a brief outline of an idea of a 1450 on paper and they rolled with it to keep us in. Like they could say, sorry, no, that's the biggest we want to make is, is 1150, good luck. And then you're gone. Um, and I said to Tom one day, I said, you'll, you'll forget building the 650 now. And he says, no, he says, we'll never forget to build the 650 because it introduces people to the family. Uh, it's okay. a great philosophy for a company because it just builds long term loyalty yeah. um, down the road. And that's it. That's it. Like we, we, we just um, we're just lucky to found, find them and we're lucky to be in a position to be able to do it and get the time and the ginger and the it. Brilliant. Brilliant. And the last thing we'll touch on, if we may, yes. which is always a really fascinating question that we want to uh, to know, is what business are you in that actually gives you the wherewithal to be able to do, to do this? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> hope the tax man's not listening. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the hotel business. We own right. three hotels in Kenmare, which is a smaller town in the southwest of Ireland. Um, a really nice town. And the only town in Ireland with more restaurants than pubs. Right. Which... Um, People who have visited Ireland will understand the importance of that statement because we have a lot of pubs in Ireland. Um, so it's very much a touristy town, but very much residential. And we don't have huge hotels. We have the, our biggest hotel is 50, uh, 
uh, 48 bedrooms and then there's two other hotels in town one with 130 rooms and the other one with 66 so there's not a huge amount of tourist accommodation around the place but it's it's a very nice destination um, and then we have a glamping resort in Drunquinet which is where we have the marina and we keep the boat and then we bought a new hotel last year called the Lansdowne Kenmare which is right at the top of Main Street which is a town centre hotel so between the three of them that keeps us busy which is unfortunate because really um, the flip side of the year for us is that we should really have the boat in New Zealand right. that's where we should be going because that's when we have time to travel yep. as opposed to during the summer when we're tied up with business um, and the sun is nice and I'm thrilled that you came today because it gives me an excuse to get out on the water um, <laughs> but it's hard enough to get away during the summer which is unfortunate for the business uh, that we're in and the, and the pastime that we enjoy because we don't golf or do anything of those things nature that you can do in the winter um, but it is uh, that's the nature of the beast anyway. yeah yeah. yeah no fair enough well that's fantastic that's been so interesting thank you so much for your time thank you and thank you so much as well for taking us out on your wonderful boat um and if you've not seen it which you probably won't have because i haven't put it up yet this one's going up first um john was kind enough to give us a really fabulous spin out we went right out into the atlantic with this um and yeah there's a really good video coming so do watch out for that um and indeed we've even got marianne with us who's tucked away in a corner right at the back there She's come along for the ride as well. She's completely overexposed. You probably can't even see her, bless her. Yeah, there we go. But that's been a really interesting one. I hope you enjoyed that. Do let us know what you think of it in the comments. Huge thanks to you again, John, for Thank your you time. Thank you for coming. We appreciate it greatly. Thank you. Oh, it's very much a pleasure. Hugely a pleasure. And uh, stay tuned. If you've not subscribed, do hit that subscribe button. Marianne always does that on her video, and I keep forgetting to do it. But yeah, if you haven't subscribed, do join us. We've got lots more great stuff coming, and we'll catch you on another one of these very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.